Hello my audiophile friends and welcome back to the channel. Today I'm going to be doing a look inside video on the Dayton Audio T652 mid tower speaker. Now I debated on whether to do a look inside video on this speaker because it seems every time I do a look inside video on budget oriented speakers, it always brings out the audiophile snobs and I never understood why. When I started out in this hobby, I didn't have any of this equipment that you see behind me. My budget at the time was thrift stores and garage sales. And if it wasn't for speakers like the T652 that sparked my curiosity and love for this hobby, this channel wouldn't exist. So please, before you comment, be respectful because we all come from different budgets and backgrounds. I know some of you will probably ask me how the T652 sounds, so I thought now would be a good time to get that out of the way before I do the teardown video. If I remember right, the MSRP on the T652 with the Parley Carbonate tweeter is around $130 for the pair. I bought mine for the low, low price of $80 per pair as open box units. That's insanely cheap. Obviously, for that kind of money, the bar is set pretty low, but surprisingly, I was quite impressed by what the T652s had to offer. The thing that impressed me about these speakers is the bass output. I popped in a few of my favorite CDs and was quite surprised by the level of detail and bass output that I was hearing. When I placed the speakers in small to medium sized rooms, the bass output was adequate enough during my music listening sessions where I think some people would probably be okay with not having a subwoofer connected. The other thing that surprised me is the tweeter. Usually speakers in this price category have tweeters that sound harsh and can be fatiguing to listen to but I didn't experience any of that with the T652s. For tower speakers priced this low, they seem to offer pretty nice value for money. If you're an avid watcher of my channel, then it probably comes as no surprise that I couldn't leave my T652s alone. With every T652 sold, Dayton Audio has included an optional extra credit homework assignment with them. What I mean by that is if you want to invest a little time and money, then it really isn't that hard to take them to the next level. I know this type of work isn't for everyone, but it is a good way to learn about speaker design techniques that can be really beneficial to some of these budget speakers. For my T652s, I ended up bracing the cabinet and lining the inside walls with carpet padding to help reduce any cabinet resonances that are taking place. To help with sound quality, I gave my T652s a proper crossover. I found this crossover design on the internet from someone who was willing to share their expertise with the community. It's people like them that really make this hobby so enjoyable. I might do a video series on my T652s like I did with my Klipsch and JBL subwoofer. If you'd like to see that series, let me know by hitting that like button. After all these upgrades, I probably have an additional $90 to $100 invested into these speakers, and it really has transformed them. I better quit talking about this, otherwise I'll never get to the look inside video. So without further ado, let's get started with the teardown. So the first thing I'm going to remove is the tweeter. It's held in by three Phillips head screws. The speaker wires to the tweeter are soldered on and the speaker cable appears to be copper clad aluminum. If I had to guess they are probably using 22 gauge speaker cable. The tweeter is about what I expected for this price point. The tweeter features an aluminum dome which is housed in a plastic casing. On the back of the tweeter is a small ferrite magnet and the crossover is glued to it. The crossover consists of a single 6.8 microfarad electrolytic capacitor and that's it. Again, none of this is surprising for this price category. I did an impedance sweep on the tweeter and really don't know what to make of these results. This is the first time I've measured a tweeter that has ferrofluid in them, and I guess they are known for causing an extremely flat impedance curve. Impedance really starts to ramp up around 7 kHz and continues to rise quite sharply until it reaches 20 kHz. Sadly, my tool won't measure above 20 kHz, but judging by the steep curve, I wonder if the resonant frequency of this tweeter is above that. The T652s have two woofers in each cabinet. These woofers are 6.5 inches in size and are held in by four torque screws. 
All of the speaker wires to each woofer are soldered, which is nice to see. The speaker cable is the same copper clad aluminum that is being used on the tweeter. Again, none of this is surprising, but the woofers do seem pretty nice for this price point. The woofers in the T652 are pretty decent considering how insanely affordable these speakers are. The woofer features a decent sized ferrite magnet for this price category, a stamped steel basket, butyl rubber surround, and the cone material is made from polypropylene. From what I can tell, the voice coil appears to be 1.5 inches in size too. Not bad considering I only paid $80 per pair for my open box units. I thought the woofers in the T652s measured pretty decently. The impedance curve is pretty smooth and I saw some very small driver resonances taking place between 100 and 200 Hz which I doubt are even audible. The resonant frequency of this driver came in at 50 Hz and voice coil inductance came in at 0.971 millihenries. Total Q which defines how well damped a speaker is came in at 0.81 and BL came in at 5.3 teslameters. Dayton Audio is running the two woofers in parallel which do have some benefits. By running the woofers in parallel, Dayton Audio is reducing the total inductance of the drivers considerably. By doing this, it will improve transient response and sound quality. Now let's see how much these drivers weigh. And the woofer weighs 1 pound and 5.2 ounces. Another thing that impressed me is the tolerances between the drivers are very tight. I wasn't expecting that at this price point. Not even the JBL Studio 630s that I tested last month could pass this test. And they have an MSRP of $699 per pair. Yikes! In most cases, the cabinet is the most expensive component to make out of all of the parts that make up a speaker. The cabinet on the T652 doesn't have much weight to it, and you can really see that when you first pick them up. The front baffle is made from half inch MDF, and the rear cabinet wall is made from 3 8 inch MDF. I can't measure the side walls, but I would assume they are made from the same 3 8 inch material as the back cabinet wall. There is a single brace that ties all the side walls together that is located right in between the two woofers. Dayton Audio even included some damping material, which I wasn't expecting to see. It isn't much, but I'm sure it helps. Dayton Audio claims that these speakers can go down to 45 Hz, and I believe that. On my bench, port tuning came in at 36 to 37 Hz. There are some cabinet resonances taking place between 2 and 300 Hz that showed up during my impedance sweep that I circled in yellow. This can be easily rectified if you invest a little time and money into bracing the cabinet. The Dayton Audio T652 wasn't designed to win any awards. It was designed to offer good sound at an extremely affordable price point. In my opinion, the T652 is one of those speakers that can be a gateway drug into this hobby. These speakers offer good sound in the context of its price point, pretty nice aesthetics, and tremendous value. I had a lot of fun with the T652s. These speakers remind me a lot of the speakers that I started out with when I first got into this hobby. It's speakers like this that sparked my imagination and curiosity in speaker design. Whether you're building your first home theater system, or want something a bit better than a Bluetooth speaker, then the T652 from Dayton Audio is a sure way to put a smile on your face without having to drain your bank account. And that's my look inside video on the Dayton Audio T652. So long, and happy listening!